Good day students, it's another wonderful day here at Wilcox Central High School. Today's lesson is going to be about Edgar Allan Poe. And stay tuned at the end of the lesson to see what your instructions are for those of you that take me second, fourth, and sixth period because you have special instructions for this particular lesson. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and get started. <clears throat> he is one of those writers that has had a really tragic life and the first few slides are basically just going to cover the tragedy that he went through see first and foremost you know he was born in boston and he was the son of traveling actors so yeah that's already dicey as it is and obviously he lived a tragic and unhappy life because of the lack of stability um his mother died very early not long after that his father deserted him when he was two years old and that's how he ended up on the stairs of Mr. and Mrs. John Allen. That basically fills in the blank as in how he got his middle name. All right. Um, as the years grew by, he began to have constant disagreements with his stepfather, which began to spiral and trickled into his time in college, like at University of Virginia. Um, one of the bigger things that he dealt with was drinking and gambling and that actually kept him from being able to graduate from university of virginia and eventually he started to reconcile with his father with his stepfather and he got an appointment with west point military academy at the behest of his stepfather however he went mad and began raiding the armory and he locked himself in there and he threatened to basically you know blow up the campus and you know shoot up the area and he literally was out of his mind so that in a way provoked his dismissal from the academy this caused a rift in the separation between himself and his father and it basically led up to a lot of a lot of pain that came afterwards so 1836 not too long after he ended up marrying his 14 year old cousin Virginia now for those of y'all that were paying attention southern gothic literature basically explores the concept of incest and this is one of the greatest examples of that granted it was his second cousin but still this is is this is considered incest also this is a type of contradiction because in the 1800s the the law of statutory rape was not really introduced and, and there were no consequences behind it in fact they encouraged the girls to get married young so that they could still be of some use when it came to childbearing. See, now we're in the 21st century. You don't have to worry about so much of that anymore. There are women there having babies all the way into the 40s. So they didn't want to take risks back then. Plus the medical industry was not as pristine and current as it was now. So he finally did get to do what he wanted to do. He worked the last 12 years of his life as a journalist, editor, and a creative writer. and although he got a chance to do what he really wanted to do he ended up living in poverty stricken conditions and then not long after that in 1846 his wife died of an illness we know it as tuberculosis but they call it consumption consumption was basically a death sentence now curing tuberculosis is as easy as getting the actual tb test so it's amazing what modern medicine can do not long after that, he died in Baltimore because he was drunk. And most of all, he died a poor man. He basically had nothing to show for any of the things that he did in life. He couldn't, he couldn't basically, <clears throat> he couldn't produce the results that he needed to produce. And that was probably the most tragic thing that he probably could have ever gone through. Um, some, some of his work were known as tales of mystery and terror stories but the biggest thing that a lot of people don't know is that he introduced the first modern detective story he was responsible for creating the first detective his name is august c dupin he's the first detective and the first american detective he's even older than sherlock holmes who was created in the 1890s now <clears throat> some of the some of the stories and some of the poems that he wrote, name is followed, Telltale Heart, Casco of Amontillado, The Black Cat, The Pit and the Pendulum, and of course the poems, The Raven, Annabelle Lee, To Helen and Lenore. 
The one that we're gonna be looking at as far as short stories go is the Telltale Heart, and that will be uploaded within the next 24 hours. And then, the, then Annabelle Lee will be the poem that we will study, as I've mentioned before in the previous lecture. Addiction. Addiction is something that you basically cannot let go of, no matter how hard you work at it. And being addicted to something is dangerous, especially considering how we become dependent upon it. Edgar Allan Poe is no different. You know, you have musicians, you have other kinds of writers that are addicted to something. Poe was no different. His addiction was opium. And there was a specific kind of opium that was out that treated headaches and stomach pains called laudanum. And laudanum can be very effective in treating the conditions that deal with pain. But like I, like I said before, opiums on opioids are very addictive. So one of the little sub miniature lessons that I could give you here is be careful what you do, be careful what you introduce into your body or what you do to cope with different stress because that in itself can be an addiction. What's supposed to start off as a healing process can turn into a dependency and dependency is always the root for an addiction. All right. Illusion. There are three main questions that I'm going to ask on your unit three on your unit two test. The first thing about illusion is what is it? reference to a famous historical or literary figure or event. Second question is, what are your four sources? Literature, history, Greek myth, and the Bible. Finally, what is the purpose of illusion? Serves to explain, clarify, or enhance whatever subject is on the table. The crux of Edgar Allan Poe's writing is always dealing with supernatural horror and the atmosphere of the unknown. So basically, he shocks us. He 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 gives that unpredictable terror that we that we look at. Um, he incorporates high emotion, sentimentalism, but also he throws in like that anger, surprise. These are the different emotions that he gives us that he that he stirs inside of our body. And then of course he has a myriad of words that are tied directly into Gothicism, like fear, mystery, apparition, devil, ghost, haunted, terror, fright, and fainting. These are all things that make up the that make up the genre that we study. Finally, you look at the term symbol. Um, as far as these three bullets go, the only thing that you need to know is that symbols are something that rep that are themselves, but also represent something else. The other two bullets you won't have to really know about, at least not yet. So we're gonna save them for another conversation. So. That has been your miniature lesson for Edgar Allan Poe and second, fourth and sixth period. This is your assignment for this particular this particular lesson. You are to name five things that you learned about Poe using the slides or this video. You cannot use any other material. You have to use either the slides or this video. And I want you to identify a term that you do not understand. And then we'll we'll go over that whenever we have time to review Pope. So this has been another lesson and we're signing off.